Hi, I'm Craig Blundell and I'm delighted that beatit.tv have come along and asked me to do a rig walkthrough with you. So um, I'm currently on the Steve Hackett Genesis Revisited Tour. I came straight off the Stephen Wilson Tour for uh, 18 months. So we needed a new rig, different sounds, different tones, and this basically was sketched in a hotel room in, I think, Norway last year. Um, when I first got the, the, the gig with, with Steve Hackett, we decided that, okay, I need a different rig. I can't use the Stephen Wilson rig. So um, this was devised and this was pretty much on two pieces of paper. I sent it over to Mapex uh, and literally four months later, it's, it's here on stage and it's, it's a thing of beauty. Now, obviously it's the internet, so everyone has you know, free speech and you know, it's too much, there's too many drums, too many cymbals. Yeah, yes, there is. I, I'm fully aware that there's, there's a lot of things going on here. But um, when um, Steve Hackett contacted me, I was like, right, I'm gonna go two up, two down, perfect, one kick. And then he started sending me the material that, that, that he wanted to cover. So he's doing Selling England by the Pound, an amazing classic Genesis album that Phil Collins was absolutely on fire on. he just come out the Brand X days, so he was playing like no one else. And then Spectral Mornings with John Shearer on drums, and they had this kind of really massive power tom sound. And then recently, his new album where he's, he's had Gully Bream, he's had Simon Phillips, he's had all these amazing drummers on this album. Um, Nick DiVigilio as well, as, as well as Gary O'Toole. So I'm having to cover Tom because Steve likes it, how the album should sound, as in tonally. So we've had to cover a lot of old things. I've had to, I, I spoke to Paisty about cymbals, like trying to recreate Phil cymbals. So we've gone for um, 2002 Big Beats and I've gone for 602 Modern Essentials, quite thin. Um, but trying to get as much as I can to sound like the record. Same with the drums as well. I'm using two kicks, Back to the, back to the Chester days, one of my heroes and an amazing drummer. So using two kicks, which is a new thing for me since I was like 14. So that's pretty interesting. Um, now, Tom's wise, uh, this is the Mapex Versatus, which is, um, I was pretty heavily involved with this kit from the beginning. They only have 10 artists worldwide. And I was the only British guy, which was really flattering. So um, I've gone for eight, 10, 12. 13, 16, 18, with an 18 inch uh, auxiliary drum uh, as a gong, and two 22 inch kicks. Um, it's taken a bit of getting used to, uh, having that kick set up, um, but I'm pretty much there now. Uh, Head-wise, I'm using Aquarian Force 10s on top and Classic Clears on the bottom. I've been with Aquarian for forever, um, so the head-wise was, was pretty much an easy choice for me, and they, they last for forever, so my tech's happy as well. Now, symbols-wise, so um, let's have a bit of a left to right, I guess, really. So <clears throat> I've got a Novo channel. I use four crashes on the gig, starting with a uh, 2002 Big Beat 21. I go to a 2602 Modern Essentials, a 22602 Modern Essentials, and then the big guy, the 24-inch Big Beat, which is it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful symbol. And I came off using um, 2002s on the last tour which are a little bit more aggressive so I just decided to pull it back a little bit and go for something less bitey and something a little bit more, more warm. Ride cymbals I'm using a 24 inch 602 Modern Essentials, never used a 24 inch ride before. It doesn't feel like a 22, it has all the body and the soul but the attack of a, a, a smaller cymbal but that real rich tone of a, of a big cymbal. I'm using two ride cymbals so I'm using um, a medium flat ride, a 20 inch a 602 medium flat ride which is absolutely beautiful i never thought i'd use one of these before um but they sound fantastic um symbol we can't talk about hopefully we can soon um a little thing that i've been working on with peisty um and then i've got all the kind of bells and whistles for the for the epping forest um track there's loads of like little bells and sprinkles so i've got little cup chimes two accents cup chimes and the mega bell which also doubles up as a hat when it's raining which is pretty cool. Um, so I use that, they're, they're, they're fantastic. Uh, eight inch Modern Essential Splash, 10 inch Modern Essential Splash, and PSTX 10 with a flanger stack. Hats wise, this was a big thing for me. I was, I was really torn with high hats. I was trying to find something really warm, dark, but with attack, and it, it is quite difficult. And you don't know until you're kind of on the gig or in rehearsals, but we went for the Modern Essentials 14 inch, and it, it's absolutely the perfect sound for me really is perfect for the gig. It's not too overpowering, it just sits in the mix, but you can make it pop out w w when you need to. Um, I'm using a Roland SPDSX, so it's got all sorts of clicks and bits and bobs in the cinema show here. Um, so it's clicks, bells and whistles, mark tree effects, that sort of thing. Um, my trusty iPad to get me through the gig when my brain has a meltdown. Um, I have my charts that I, I, I write out, and I write my charts out in my handwriting. I'm not a massive fan, let me show you this. 
I'm not a massive fan of um, uh, PDF scores. I know people use that, but I find if I write out a piece of music and then scan it, I kind of remember my own handwriting. So, and I also put colors in there, orange and yellows. I used to put reds and greens like traffic lights. So when things are green, it's easy. When things are red, it's a stop. So I use the yellow, which is easier. The oranges is a little bit more trickier, but that's pretty much it, what I use. So, so I'm not spending all night looking at my charts. I'm just looking at colors. And I can also just remember it easier because I wrote it down. So I use that a lot. Now, there's nothing too heavy on the floor. Not like the last tour, it's pretty easy. I've just got two single uh, Falcons. Uh, single Falcon hi-hat and I've got two FS5U's boss pedals. The left side's for the click, the right side is for all sounds off. So I've got samples I can just, I don't have to use this at all. I can hit it and then my feet are controlling all the sounds, which really, really helps. Uh, and this, well, everyone's, <laughs> this seems to be a talking oh, point on absolutely. my, yeah, do you want to come down? You can see this. Down, yeah. Let's do this. So this is a real talking point. So um, over the years, I mean, I find, you know, as, as you get a bit older, I would, I'll say mature, let's not say <laughs> old, let's be generous. Um, my signature stick with Vader was 7A, and that's what I did the first leg of the Stephen tour with. Um, and then I, f I find myself just playing that a little bit harder and breaking more sticks, which is not a boast, nobody wants to break stuff. Um, and so I went to a 5, a 5A and then a 5B, and now on, I ended up on the last tour on a 3A, a Fatback 3A, and that's kind of stuck. So my sound is coming out of a 3A stick. I mean, this is really important. When, when you are trying cymbals out or testing cymbals, it's try different tips, you know? The difference between a bullet tip and an acorn and a nylon is staggering when you're playing a ride cymbal. You, need, you might go into a store and try a ride cymbal, like, it's not for me. Take three or four different sticks with you because tonally, it's dramatically different. Coming from a small bullet on a 7A to a large bullet on a, on a 3A, the cymbals sound completely different. So that really affected my cymbal choices. What sticks am I gonna use on the tour? Because I can hit a 5A and it's gonna sound completely different on the metals than it is a, a, a 3A. Common knowledge to most, but if you're kind of just starting out and picking your cymbals, really important you take three or four different pairs of sticks to you because the cymbal is completely dramatically different. You know, it's, it really is. And so it's just things you pick up over the years, with especially touring now, I've been on the road for like four years. This little guy, now, is a Mapex stool. So a bicycle stool, I sit really high. I never used to sit high, I used to sit quite low. And I prefer playing on top of the drums rather than up at the drums. Mm -hmm. So my, mm -hmm. my hands aren't doing that moment, they're doing that moment, almost like an extension of the moella. Now my, I max my stool out, as it were, which sounds a bit weird, but I was like, as far high as I can get. And the thing was completely unstable. So I said to John Galliard, who's my tech on tour, he's, he's, he's Mr. Fix It, he fixes everything. Anything I've got a problem with, he's behind me in an instant. He's like, oh, I'll make you a stage for it. I'm like, oh, really? So he's made this. Now, the great thing about it is he's, put the, he's indented it so the, the legs are in holes. So it's not going to slide off. Because when he made it, I thought, I thought it was the other way around. I'm on a, the world's smallest stage. I'm like, I can't do that. But he's a genius. So he made this little thing, which sits perfectly. So the stool, once again, it doesn't move. It's in place and it's higher. So, um, yeah, I mean, that was really, really, really cool. And just some simple things like I have a, an upturned drum head here that I normally put all my percussion and shakers and stuff on. And he made this wonderful little foam platform, which my iPad, my mixing desk, which welcome to technology nowadays. So my, the whole band mix is pretty much, okay, it's here. That's, that's my band mix. Okay. So that, that's the whole thing throughout the whole show. And as, as the, the, the set evolves, the track changes, it gives you your mix or already in situ. So I don't necessarily have to touch that anymore. That's all set now, and I'm kind of using that on the fly. But yeah, he built me that, that amazing little foam platform. And I just realized, you know, having a music stand, everything used to just fall off. So I just got a snare, a snare drum. Everyone talked about it on the last tour as well. It's like it was a talking point. Just getting a, a, a snare stand, putting a drum head upside down and having all my stuff. And it has, nothing's gonna fall off, you know? It's simple things like that, you know, that, that, that you pick up on the tour. Snares wise, I'm using a Mapex Wraith. It has the bark and the bite, the all you want, but it's also, it's controllable. It's not one of those real metal snares that's gonna take your face off. And uh, for the last Stephen Wilson tour, they made me a 12 by five custom, the Saturn, essentially it's a Saturn um, uh, Vitor, but they, they made a one-off snare drum. It's a 12 by five for me. It sounds, sounds amazing, real popper, you know, it's, it's really, really nice. And I've got a high energy head on that one. Super kicks on the kick. Now, do you want to go around the front? I want to show yeah, you this yeah, stuff around the front. This is pretty cool. Another talking point with this rig that, that 
I guess, loads of websites when the, when the kick came out, is that there's nothing inside the kicks whatsoever. When, um, when Mapex looked at the, these, these kicks, and yes, they're kind of more vintage size kits, is we put three rings in. Now, what, what that do, does essentially, when you kick the, the bass drum, it'll send a, a sound wave to the front of the head, some of it will escape, and then it'll send some of it back, which gives you that almost like double triggering on, on the kick head. The middle, the middle is the most important one. It really breaks up the frequency of the sound wave. So I can have both kits completely open and they sound absolutely great. The only thing it's controlled with is, is felt on the front and a little bit of felt on the super kick two on the back. Mm. Without it, you get the rumble, but it's completely, completely controllable. Um, and obviously these have been a talking point. This is the, this is the, the thing that, and they we're into what we're into. We're into the end of month one now and they are still absolutely bullet, bulletproof. Um, sound wise I've got as much resonance as I'll need I don't have any gels on the kit now apart from my mm -hmm. snare drum I don't need to put gels on if I want to control the dampening I can just drop the noise gate in here with these two two things they'll, they'll drop it and it chokes the drum or this thing's on a magnet so the polarity of the magnet is is there so there's nothing touching the drum at all mm -hmm. so the magnet I can I can push the magnet which will make the drum move less and choke the sound of the drum so at the moment it's pretty pretty open that's all just magnets here which I have an allen key I can turn the polarity of the magnet which will push it to, to stay still um, so I have a, if I have them completely locked, the drums are really choked. It's almost like you're using like a, a really old, almost like three oil-filled head. Mm -hmm. If I have the magnets completely open and the no noise gate closed, then it, it, it has the, it wide open. I've choked the eight, so I've dropped the noise gate in on the eight, and I've also dropped it in on, 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 the, on the 13 a little bit as well. So this is a, it's, it's absolutely wonderful, and it's really interesting. When, when Mapex first put this out, everyone was like, oh, it's completely over-engineered, Yes, it's open engineered, but when you sit behind it and you start to play play with it and you start to really configure, fine tune it, it's amazing. It really is. I'm going to say it's amazing because I'm a Mapex artist, but if I'm going to sit sit with this and, and play with one tom and get tone and the tonal qualities and the depth of, of tuning I can get with this, this tom and this tom holder, it's absolutely staggering. Mm. And they've created something very, very special. The drum, mm. These drums are amazing. Mm. Um, Makes you feel safe, doesn't it? It does, that's the thing, you know. It's, I, as you grow, your sound grows with you as well. That's, that's the thing that, that I've noticed, you know. Is, you know, people like Gavin and Gary Husband and people like that, they have their own sound, but it's evolved uh, over mm -hmm. the years, and they're amazing players as well. And technology, even in, a, in, a, in acoustic instruments, technology is paramount, you know, it, it really is. I've still got all my vintage kits, which are wonderful, you know, but when I need that little bit of bite and sparkle, then I, I, I've got this stuff. And I'm very, very privileged. I know I'm very, very privileged. And the whole thing's mounted on four, three or four? Now, I think it's four Roland TD50 racks. Mm -hmm. my, my friends and colleagues at Roland, I was like, I need a new rack because the last one was just on tour and in storage. Can, can you help me? And I had, I had this idea that also I'm doing two kicks, I want the center pillar. So pretty much it came from me in my garage at home with a hacksaw just hacking up pipes. I mean, it's the drummer's dream. It's that, it's that Christmas day. It's like you get a, a bit of tubing and, and you get to model it. It's like scale electric or Meccano for grown-ups. You know, we're, we're drummers. We never grow up, do we? But you get the idea. It's so... I created the rack and I thought, right, hi-hat, I'm going to put an extra bar in for the hi-hat, so the hi-hat's completely rock solid. I'm going to put an auxiliary bar in for all the splashes, otherwise you know, you've got a bit of space. Yeah, so it took about three days to design. It's all mounted off one, two, three, four, four central pillars. And my, John, fair play, my tech's amazing. He's got it down to an absolute art. You know, he's got it out. I even labelled it for him before he came over. But he's, he's made it his own now. You, you find when, when, you do a, when you do a tour, you have the idealistic kit in, in your head, but the, the drum tech takes over and that's his mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. All I have to do, he spends more time on this mm -hmm. than, than I do. I just sit and, and play it. And to be fair, he's, he's, amazing. Mm -hmm. he's amazing. Everything is clean, everything is set up perfectly and it always sounds, sounds great, you know. What more can you ask for as a player? It's amazing. Yeah, great. Okay. So I think that's pretty much the overview of the kit. Um, this is gonna be out, we're out till next June, it looks like. Um, so it's, it's, it's a long old tour, it's going to be something kind of like 14, 14 months or so, I think it is, in total with rehearsals. And then um, on to the next one really, which will be back on an, on an old rig or, or who knows, but this, this has been already a month in, this has been a real privilege to play. And I love it. Thank you guys, I hope you enjoyed it and um, 
If you want any more information, you can find me on my Facebook, via this website, um, and I will hopefully, I would love to see you at a show. Take care.